Hello everybody, this is Eva from the Essential Guide to Digital Jewelry Design and welcome back to a new tutorial. It's been a little while and uh, we've been a bit busy this side but um, we're back today with a tutorial on how to do engraving in a ring band and uh, um, if you don't have the automated tools like from Matrix or some other plugin, uh, how you would do this barehandedly in Rhino. So let's get started. What I'm going to start with today is a just a simple band with a comfort fit. So in our front viewport, we are going to create a circle with a circumference of 54, which is the standard European, pretty much Kind of like the medium uh, European size for rings for ladies and we're going to create another profile and this time around it's going to be a rectangle I'm just going to draw it out from the center I'm going to go into my right viewport and using my O snap I'm going to click on the bottom quadrant of my circle and I'm going to draw that out. We're going to make that around about six millimeters wide. Yeah, that's kind of wide, maybe. No, make it five. And we're going to make it around about two millimeters in height. Okay, there we've got a profile. Now, all we're going to do is um, we're going to create an arc. I'm going to take the arc start in point on the arc and I'm just going to go over to my side or my right my right view and there where you see the um, midpoint on the side of our rectangle and draw a line from one midpoint to the other and then just pull that arc up if you see it giving you a strange result like that let's try and see if we can reenact that like that it means it's catching somewhere on the other side of the circle of the ring size so we just got to be careful with that to just use the midpoint of the top of the rectangle and it should work fine we're going to split that rectangle with that arc and delete the inside half and we're just going to join that up and this is going to be the profile for our ring band. Um, at this point, I think maybe six would have been better than five. So I'm just going to extend this out a little bit. But with Rhino History on, we can change that at a later stage. So let's create a layer and name that band. And we are going to use a sweep one rail to create the ring band and usually when you have to choose a seam now we're going to create the engraving on the outside of our ring band so the best thing would be to have the seam on the inside of the ring band that way if you have any problems down the line with the with the engraving you can literally delete holes on the single surface of the outside i'll show you that when we get there so let's have a look um what should do just going to turn on our shaded view mode okay and that looks good i think that that might be a little bit better a bit thicker that's right okay great um i'm going to go back to my curves and i'm going to change my curve layer color to red so i can see nicely on it and today what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the initials of my of my husband Eric and uh, I know that he likes uh, fracture fonts and gothic fonts quite a lot so I'm going to use the um, the gothic font that I have the, the, the black letter font that I have in my in my system Pragmata Pro Fracture I've made it five millimeters in height and I don't have the choice of boldening it up here but we can do that with offset curves I'm going to make it 
curve output instead of a surface output so we can do some curve editing and I'm just going to drop those curves right in there okay so the next thing to do here is to check these curves and see that they are not intersecting one another or uh, doubling up or maybe looping um, this can happen sometimes when you use a script font for example you can have little intersections uh, that might just give you trouble if you do a extrusion um, and why do you say what well, what's going to be different about these letters on the ring band as opposed to just making a basic extrusion well yeah sure we can do that we can let's create an extrusion layer change that over to blue and let's just extrude our text I'm going to use the gumball tool to do that I'm just going to extrude it by so millimeter again and this we could literally just um, splop on the surface flow along the surface flow along the curve we have many many options but um, let's say we take the splop there's this splop in here we'll use in here let's just type it in splop there we go with a splop you need to grab your object kind of in the center draw that circular cage around it and then just choose the surface you want to splop it on and if I had a splop it on here Oh, with our history on we can lower down the text now by about 0.5 millimeters mm. knew it does not record that in the history so let's try that again see No, it's inside the surface of our ring. So if we had to go ahead and just boolean this out now. We'd have engraved lettering, but it would just have a flat surface on the bottom. And what I'm looking to do for this particular engraving is have these letters come down into a single blade at the bottom to really give it that impression that it's it's engraved by a needle engraver by a real engraver and, and not just stamped into the surface of our ring so let's go ahead and build that and how will we do that well first things first we are going to need this surface and we're going to need it flat so we are going to roll the surface out and uh, for that we need to go to our curves from surfaces tools and we need to smash well it turns out that smash is not available in the um, curves from surfaces toolbar but what we will do is we will use create UV curves which incidentally you can also find under your surface menu drop down under surface flattening there you have a choice of which kind of flattening uh, tool you want to you want to use so I'm just going to use that outside surface and lay that out flat and what we're going to do with that is we're going to create a roll out surface layer and I like to use colors so I can tell the difference between the things I'm doing and we're going to create a surface with that 
just the normal coplanar surface put that into the rollout surface we can switch off our band we'll leave our curves on we can just hide our ring creation curves and we're going to bring this in i'm just going to bring it right into the center here of our band and why am i keeping the extrusion well the reason i'm keeping the extrusion is because what we're going to do with the extrusion is we're going to make we're going to make a trim so let's bring these letters in we could at this point even look at ways of bullying them together like that do that so that's too close we'll move that a little bit away okay that's good and well next step so what we can do at this point is split our surface with either the curves or with the extrusions and I at the same at the same breath I'm going to do the same with my letters so I'm going to use the surface to split my letters as well so I'm just going to delete the top of our letters and wait a second and I'm going to split these letters but just remember to use the inside as well otherwise it's not going to split And we delete those parts and we all have these little section here that we can also get rid of that's left behind from the lettering okay so what we're also going to do is we're going to take this these these letters and we are going to delete them so what we left with here now is something that's going to aid us in creating the engraving and how it's going to do that is well first of all we have the depth which is around about half a millimeter and second we have this surface on the bottom so if if i split my uh, explode my my surfaces i have these letters on the bottom here right so if you just invert this i have that and what i can do with that is I can create a single line in the middle of each surface so that I have my my pen line for the 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 needle end of my engraver so to speak so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do exactly that I'm in my curves I'm gonna take my polyline and I'm gonna create a um, Use the O snap. Um, I'm going to create a polyline. That's for meshes through the center here. So I'm going to do that kind of freehand. You can always clean it up afterwards. And just end it off here. What we can do here is there where it joins with a B, we're going to put another one and do the same here. This is going to join up over here more or less we'll have to work that out where these junctions are you have to think of a good solution and there we are and and i'm starting not exactly on the edge i'm starting a little bit in the middle and 
I will explain why. It's simply because what's going to happen is there we go. Let me move this over a little bit. And what will happen here is we're going to create surfaces like these. I don't know if you can see more or less what it is that I'm already starting to do. So we're just about done here. And and let's have a look at this from the perspective viewport. So Ah, this should be projected onto our surface. So what we're going to do is we're just going to select this and that and we're going to go to our projection, project curves on surfaces. There we go. And what what i have here is i have the basis to start um, building sweeps and uh, surfaces that will eventually be an engraving with a sharp sharp end so i'm going to fast forward here at this point so now i've drawn all the lines and what you're going to notice about the lines I've drawn uh, from our edges to our center line at the bottom, our needle needle edge, is that it's almost like uh, working with a poly mesh. You need either three-sided or four-sided um, objects and how we are going to work with those is literally like filling in the blanks so just to start working on one I just split the bottom line with the um, with these lines up on the surface and I am going to just take one of two tools and um, for this I'm just going to use surface from two three or four edge curves and I'm just going to create a surface here in our rollout surface okay uh, for the purpose of this we can switch off color back faces we can change that at a stage and as you can see here slowly but surely as you fill in each surface edge you have a choice you can use either your sweep two rails or you can just use the surface from two three or four edge curves and it's as simple as this guys that's what you're gonna do now this is fairly simple because I used a very straight font so that means it's got a lot of straight lines but what if you had a script font for example you'll have a lot more organic organic lines on your surface you'll have a lot more uh, double curves and um, degree three curves but same principle but you will probably find you'll be using the sweep more often what's important is that you have this curve at the bottom this this line or curve at the bottom that gives you your depth and that you have 
your edge on top here and that's why we use the extrusions to cut that out could have used the curve as well but the extrusion gave us the depth which is great and I'm just going to fill in this and come back to you when it's done Alrighty, so I have filled in every panel using either my sweep two rails or two surface from two, three or four curves. So we have a nice engraved look here and what we're going to do is join that to our main surface and go back to our band and we're just going to uh, extract the surface extract that surface we'll just make a copy of it say yes and run that uh, okay and our seam is at the bottom here that means that seam there will correspond with the edges on both sides of our rolled out surface so let's do this um, I need to create a surface on which this is flowing along uh, I have two ways of doing this I can either use this entire surface as it is joined here and just wrap it around the outside of this ring and join that to the rest of the ring or I could literally just separate the engraved lettering and just flow that along the surface here and then uh, trim it out or bullion it out but in this case what I'm going to do is I am going to use that surface to flow this entire surface along so I'm going to take the original curve that we have here and I'm going to create surface from that so create another coplanar surface so here you'll see I have two surfaces lying on top of one another I'll just change the color of the other one you see they, they are non-manifold they are lying on top of each other and I'm going to choose my surface with the text and we're going to go into our deformation tools over here and use flow along surface and at this point I'm going to choose the bottom left hand corner here which means that I would have to choose the corresponding left hand corner over here for our target surface and there we go. You can hide that. Or we could literally just bring the band into our rollout surface layer. And switch this off. And take that original layer off ah wait a second we need to explode delete now we're just going to join everything together again and there you go there you have a simple engraving for whatever piece of jewelry that's got a little bit more of a natural touch than your typical extrude and, and bang. Uh, you could alternatively try doing a um, uh, tapered extrusion and trying to, to bullion that out. But uh, tapered extrusions can be tricky and there will be a lot of work that has to go into that too. Uh, 